I want to just finish up this podcast a little bit more on the sexual harassment uh, mania that is sweeping the nation. We have another congressman that was swept up in it last week. This is a first-termer. This guy is a Democrat from uh, Nevada, Ruben Kewen. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this guy's name. Young guy, single guy. And apparently, you know, he hit on one of his staffers during his campaign, one of the people that worked uh, on his campaign. And apparently the guy asked this woman out on a date on several occasions, right? He asked her out one time and she didn't say yes. And so he asked her out more times. And apparently one of the times he asked her out, I guess his hand touched her thigh. I mean, I don't really have all the details on how his hand touched her thigh. I mean, what was she wearing? I mean, was she wearing jeans? Was she wearing a skirt? Did he, did he brush by her thigh? I mean, did he, did, he, did he rest it there? I don't know. But that's the extent of the allegations. He asked her out on multiple occasions, and she said no, and he touched her thigh. And now you've got people calling for the guy to resign his house seat because of this. And they're saying, well, you know, he made these repeated sexual uh, advances Uh, at this woman. I mean, which, you know, first of all, just because a man asks a woman out once, if she says no, that does not mean he can't ask her out again. I mean, this idea that, well, if she said no, well, then that's it. You, You don't get a second try. I mean, there are a lot of women that play hard to get. I mean, I'm not making up that word playing hard to get. I mean, it's women have been playing hard to get since, since before I was born. You know, there's an old expression that says a man chases a woman until she catches him. What does that mean, right? Well, women don't necessarily accept the first invitation to go out on a date. Even if they want to go out on a date, they, they say no for various reasons. Maybe they just want the guy to value them more. They think, well, if he has to work harder uh, to get a date with me, then he'll, you know, he'll, he'll value me more, right? The harder you work for something, the more you value it. I don't want to seem too easy. I want him to work for it. But, you know, there's probably a lot of reasons. Got, girls probably like guys that are persistent, guys that know what they want, right? Because if they're looking to marry a guy that they're hoping is going to be successful in his career, be a good provider, they don't want a guy that just takes no for an answer. They want somebody who knows what he wants and goes after it. So a lot of times they're testing us. Women, they they say, no, I don't want to go out. And then, you know, you ask them two or three times and eventually, all right, yeah, I'll go out with you. You know, I mean, that's, so how do you know? You don't know when you ask a girl out, if she says no, that that's, you know, just not, you know, an invitation to ask her out again and again until maybe she says yes. I mean, I've heard lots of stories, couples that I've known where the the, the, the wife has said, yeah, the guy asked me out so many times. He finally wore me down and I agreed to go out with him. And now they've been married for years and they have kids. What, should none of these relationships have taken place? Imagine if every guy just had to give up the first time he asked out a woman on a date and she said, no, if they had to just give up. I mean, if that were the case, then women would have to change the way they, the way they operate. Nobody could play hard to get. You'd have to know, hey, the guy asked you out, you better say yes because he's never going to do it again, right? You got one shot. This is all ridiculous. Now, I know, yes, technically he worked for her. So they say, oh, this is different because you can't ask out somebody who works for you. Well, look, I mean, I wouldn't do it, right? I mean, given the society we live in now, right? Yeah, I I, I don't think people should ask out people that they work with. I don't think people should date people that they work with. And I think that's unfortunate. Because if it wasn't for how we have all this overreaction to sexual harassment, I would find it perfectly fine to ask somebody out that you meet at work, especially at a, at a campaign. I mean, these are all temporary jobs. I mean, I had a Senate campaign, right? I mean, there are people that work for me in that campaign. I, they, that was in 2010. How long was my campaign? Six months, seven months? I mean, the people that work on campaigns go from job to job to job. I mean, you're not working with them forever, and if you happen to meet somebody on a campaign that you really like, I mean, why can't you ask that person out on a date? You know, one of the things about campaigns, usually if somebody is working with you on a campaign 
at least you have a lot in common. I mean, politically, you're you're on the same page, right? Because you're working on the same campaign. So you have something in common. And a lot of these campaigns, you know, you work long hours, you work nights. I mean, you're going to be in a situation where, you know, if you meet somebody that you really have a lot in common with and, and you're attracted to them, I mean, you know, maybe you ask them out on a date. I mean, what is what is so terrible about that? Even if you happen to be the candidate and they're one of the people that's working on the campaign, you know, especially if you're a single guy, you know, you're in the market for, you know, a wife, you know, and you find somebody who you're attracted to, who shares a lot of common interests with you, you want to ask him out. Now, all of a sudden, oh, the guy's got to resign his, his congressional seat. But, you know, here's going to be a lot of a problem, I think, for women, because you talk about legitimate, real uh, sexual harassment and things like that. I think that one of the safest ways for women to meet men is at work during the workplace. I mean, think about it. If you're a woman and you're working at the same company as, 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 you know, various men, before you accept an invitation for a date, you may know that person for months or, you know, you, you know where they work, you, 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 you know, their friends or, you know, their coworkers, people have formed opinions, right? And if you go out on a date with a person, I mean, he, I mean, he can't be. He can't treat you that badly because he's, he's still got to see you. He's still working at the same company, right? And if he does, if he does something bad, right? If he's ag- too aggressive, I mean, you know, he could, you know, you know where he works, right? So, you know, you figure that from a woman's perspective, that dating people that you know from work, it's a, it's safer than just going out with some guy you met at random at a bar one night, or maybe somebody that you met online. Right? I mean, what do you know? What do you know about those people at all? Nothing. You don't know anything about them. Right? You're just taking a real chance with an unknown quantity. The, the people that you meet at work, I think it's it's far less dangerous for a woman. I mean, for guys, guys don't really care. Right? But for women, you know, you, you think about uh, a movie, Looking for Mr. Goodbar. A lot of you might not remember that movie because it was in the, from the 1970s. So it was one of the earliest movies with Richard Gere. But in that movie. The main character, played by Diane Keaton, right? She meets some guy in a bar, she takes him home, and he kills her, right? <laughs> now, the odds of somebody that you meet in the workplace murdering you on a date are pretty much zero, right? They're above zero if you meet him in a bar, right? So that is the point. But if there is a reaction, right, an overreaction, employers are just going to come out and just outright ban. They're just going to say, look, no inter-office dating whatsoever. Nobody can ask anybody out on a date if they work for the same company. Right? Because what employer wants to take that chance now where simply asking somebody out on a date is now sexual harassment? Nobody wants to deal with that. In fact, already they're starting to cancel their Christmas parties. I read this article about a lot of office Christmas parties this year have been canceled. Some of them are being moved into the afternoon or they're just not going to serve alcohol. Because think about your typical... Christmas party at night with alcohol. And a lot of the the women, they dress up for these Christmas parties. I've been to a lot of office Christmas parties. I've seen how a lot of the women dress at these Christmas parties. Now, I'm not one of these guys that says, oh, you know, like, you know, blaming the victim for rape, right? I mean, if you if you dress a certain way, then it's your own fault if you get raped. Absolutely not, right? Uh, no, no woman is to blame for being raped no matter how she dresses. But if you dress in a way to try to be sexy and to try to attract the attention of men, and then you succeed and you get the attention of men, and men talk to you in a certain way or ask you out on a date, then, I mean, that's not harassment. What do you expect? If you don't want uh, to be seen in that light, then don't dress in, in that way. But if you look at what happens at these parties, I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of unwanted sexual uh, advances at Christmas parties, especially if they're late at night, there's dancing, there's drinking. I mean, what do you expect? There's women and men, they're single, right? And you put them in that environment. Now the owner of the company is like, well, oh my God, am I going to get sued? I mean, cause not only do these office Christmas parties cost a lot of money, because you got to rent out the venue, you got to pay for the food, you got to pay for the alcohol, maybe you got a DJ or you know live music, right? Not only do you have to front the cost of putting on a party, but now you have to assume the liability that one of the guys says something or does something 
to one of the women, and now you're going to end up in a lawsuit because, oh, it's sexual harassment. Somebody made an unwanted sexual uh, advance. So I think that it's going to be worse a year from now because a lot of these Christmas parties are planned three, four, five, six months in advance. So it's kind of too late to cancel them now. But believe me, I bet a lot of these companies already have decided we're not having a Christmas party in 2018. 2017 is the last one we're going to have because they don't want to take a risk. And I, and I think a lot of this, as I said, is going to backfire on women because not only is it going to mean that women are not going to be able to meet men at work, they're going to have to meet men in riskier environments such as you know nightclubs, bars, or you know maybe the internet. But I think that it may make it more difficult for certain women to get hired at certain jobs. And I think employers may be reluctant to send men and women out on a business trip together, right? Out of town overnight. So wouldn't that diminish uh, your your value or your opportunities if you're a woman, but your employer is afraid to put you into certain situations that may be lucrative for your career and may be good for business, but they're afraid that there may end up being an allegation of sexual misconduct or, or sexual harassment. And also, too, not all women are telling the truth, you know? And so you put this kind of power, you've now got a situation where the mere allegation of sexual impropriety is enough for a guy to lose his job, right? Just, he just, it just needs to be the allegation. And so that's a lot of power. And I'm not saying all women are dishonest, but sometimes when women, you know, are scorned, and of course there are a lot of guys who are jerks. I'm not saying that guys aren't jerks and they could, you know, they, they, they can be, a real jerk to a woman, they could cheat on their girlfriend and now she's mad. But instead of keying the car, right, they just file a false uh, claim of uh, sexual harassment and now the guy loses his job. So, you know, for guys, it's even riskier to, you know, to try to date somebody that they, that they met on the job, that they meet at the office. And this is all very unfortunate that we have gone down this road that we can no longer, uh, interact in that in, in a social way with coworkers, right? That they're now completely off limits. But I think that is uh, the path that we're on and there's probably no turning back.